So it's not just about security, but it's also about creating prosperity. It's about creating skills, economic stability, economic security, because that in turn creates a more secure nation as well. So they need to be thinking about growth as well as technology, about capability, about mission. And therefore that kind of symbiosis between public and private sector we see is getting much deeper. This is All Quiet on the Second Front, a podcast where boring conversations around defense tech and national security come to die. Join me, Tyler Sweat, and my Second Front comrades as we dismantle the mundane, cut through the bureaucratic BS to demystify the world of defense tech. But be warned, this is not a typical government podcast. Ready to get weird? Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm your host, Tyler Sweat. Welcome to another episode of All Quiet on the Second Front, the podcast where boring defense talk comes to die. We are once again going international. And uh, longtime friend, first time podcast guest. Uh, really excited to have Saj from Plexall with us. Um, one, thanks for making the time, brother. And two, uh, could not be more excited to have this conversation. I think this has been years in the making. So glad to have you. Thanks, Tyler. So good to see you. Love love what you guys are doing. Thanks for inviting me onto this. Heck yeah. So uh, as with many of my guests, right, I've had the pleasure of knowing you, collaborating for years, but for folks who might not be familiar with sort of you and your background and Lexall and sort of what you guys are working on, um, can you kind of give everybody a little bit of a, who are they listening to and, and kind of what are you working on? Yeah, sure. So a little bit about me first. So I started my career in the UK's Royal Air Force. Um, so joined the military, uh, trained as a pilot my early career. Um, had a long term, fo- long time focus on um, flying aeroplanes. Uh, unfortunately, I, I, I had to change career a little bit earlier um, due to some changes in government policy, which I'm sure we might touch on. Um, and I went into the commercial world. So for the last, um, well, over a decade, really, I've been working and establishing my career at the intersection of business, technology, um, international relations and, and policy. And for the last six years, I've been part of an organization called Plexal in the UK. And our mission is all about um, establishing ecosystems that bring together government, industry, academia to really solve societal challenges um, through collaboration on technology and with startups. Um, much of our work is in the defense and security space. That's a core part of our mission. And it really, for me, it feels like I've kind of come full circle um, since the start of my career in now working on some of the challenges and opportunities that I get the chance to do so every day um, with both government and industry. I think it's an, it's an interesting spot, sort of that intersection between public and private and academia. I think that each of those, each of those constituencies comes with, you know, a load of, you know, maybe baggage and, hey, this is the way we do things. Um, where have you seen, we'll start on the negative and we'll go to the positive. What are some of those common challenges or like roadblocks you see? Cause I think it's really easy to say, Hey, we're going to increase collaboration. Hey, we're going to pull a bunch of people together. Where do you see that kind of fail? You know, and maybe either constituency by constituency or just in the, the totality of it. Yeah. I, I mean, first of all, I, I think probably an understanding and an empathy level. So from a more of a philosophical standpoint. So, yeah. you know, I obviously just told you a little bit about my career background. Um, I've, you know, very personally, I, this is a space that I deeply care about. I'm very kind of mission orientated as an in- individual. There are lots of people like that, not who don't just work in defense and security, people who just care about the world, care about society. And, you know, they, they have no way of kind of accessing or understanding or, gaining um, empathy with the national security mission. And I personally, and we as an organization feel that's an untapped opportunity because there's lots of people out there that, you know, could engage in this space. Often many of these people are also, you know, pretty bright. They're working on interesting ideas and they're developing new technologies and capabilities that are super relevant to what our our countries need and, and, you know, what allied partners need going forward. Um, but they just never have that access point. And really, I feel that one of the key barriers is about enabling or overcoming that access point. Then you have all of the infrastructure challenges that surround that. So 
you know, gaining the kind of the license to operate, the authority to operate in the space, um, you know, developing the relationships that obviously sit across security boundaries, they're hard to access. Um, and then also, um, you know, not just developing technologies and capabilities that are relevant, but also actually applying them to solve challenges, which are now, which, are, which involves you having to cross various kind of organizational compliance process boundaries as well. Then lastly, it's about, you know, the challenges of making money in the space, which is hard as well, right? And, you know, this, this the market is hugely incumbent dominated, um, but it's very unique as well in the sense that I don't believe the defense and security ecosystem is necessarily one where an, an upstart, a new entrant displaces an incumbent, but rather needs to collaborate with them as well because of, you know, the long tail around some of these hardware platforms that are in operation in a in, in military setting, at least. Um, and so with that all in mind, you know, that it's a very kind of complicated space. It's There are lots and lots of barriers to entry, but there are lots of opportunities and rewards through participating. And that that's part of the work that we do to try and enable that. Nishi, when you talk about the the need for empathy and maybe should some increased awareness, right? Awareness, the context and the empathy. How did, how do you guys, you know, flex all, how do you guys approach, you know, building that? I think on both sides, right? It's easy to say, hey, the government needs to change, right? The bureaucracy needs to move faster. I think that, that sort of blade cuts multiple ways. We don't maybe talk about it as much that, hey, you know, uh, startups and, maybe academia or other commercials who, who haven't collaborated and aren't traditionally sort of a defense or national security have got to take a little bit of time to, to learn a little bit more about, Hey, how do these organizations that we want to work with and collaborate with, how do they work? How do you guys approach that? That sort of like knowledge transfer and almost like community building. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a really good question. So there's a couple of bits to that question. So three main points that, probably make number one is firstly the challenges around the defense and security challenges uh, today are, ex are increasingly existing and permeating way beyond government so they need they need other actors other entities nationally and increasingly internationally to do things on their behalf for them to you know achieve their missions of keeping their country safe give you an example so increasingly critical national infrastructure is owned and operated by the private sector but those platforms those pri that private sector owned and operated critical national infrastructure are you know that are where national security threats emanate and they're increasingly in the front line of some of the biggest risks that happen today just think cyber but also increasingly from a you know a more kinetic perspective as well as we've seen in ukraine you know government needs those entities that are operating that infrastructure to recognize their contribution their role within the national security uh, mission and they and and they need to be contextually aware of that the second aspect is from a private sector perspective you know how can you help develop how do you contribute those capabilities to drive forward government if we're partners in this enterprise what is you know how do you contribute to that and then thirdly i think from a government perspective their mission is slightly evolving as well certainly here in the uk so it's not just about security but it's also about creating prosperity it's about creating skills economic stability economic security because that in turn creates a more secure nation as well so they need to be thinking about growth as well as technology about capability about mission and therefore that kind of symbiosis between public and private sector we see is getting much deeper how do we how do you, how does one enable this well what part of the approach we're seeing here in the UK, but also internationally, it's about creating these problems, problem centric ecosystems, as we call them. So an opportunity to bring together partners across government, across industry, across academia, but also increasingly from an industry perspective, different verticals that can take different lenses or apply different lenses to the, to a shared problem. Um, because as we've just said, you know, these problems increasingly permeate across sector boundaries and across industry verticals, creating these spaces, these programs that allow, allow people to look at these challenges in, in slightly different ways, but also collectively contribute to the solution development or against those problem sets. 
we feel is the way forward. And that also creates market opportunities. And so from a startup perspective, you know, the, having an access to an ecosystem which permeates public and private boundaries and looks at these problems from a horizontal perspective, cr cutting through those sectors creates, you know, opportunities for, you know, dual use technologies, dual use and solutions and, and new markets to emerge. Yeah, it's it's interesting, you know, when you talk about sort of the, the symbiosis and then the, I don't know, use permeable because you just use that, that's a great word for it. But if you think about like the, the non-static or, you know, sort of like ever-changing balance between, you know, what is national security? What is the private sector? What is the public sector? Sort of the, there is an aspect of, I think, national security where many times we the royal we sort of will equate that to like force projection capability or defense, you know, you know, big, big sort of moat around, you know, Hey, we're safe, we're secure. There is an aspect when you start to talk about kind of that public private partnership, there's an aspect of like resilience that comes in there, you know, whether that's, you know, you're critical national infrastructure, you're talking about the grid, you're talking about water, right? You're talking about electricity and connectivity and things like that. And then you take it another level down and you talk about just the the human sort of like the Maslowian condition of security where it's economic security. And, you know, like I, I oftentimes have to remind people when we're talking about like what the U S Congress is or isn't doing that, Hey, like national security is also a jobs program. And that doesn't make it that if it's like an inefficient monster, massively inefficient in the prosperity, then sure it's bad, but right. Having this perfect piece of technology that provides for like an omnipotent, you know, national security, at the expense of economic livelihood of everybody in society is likely not going to create that sort of outcome that you're looking for because you get societal unrest, you get all of that. It's a super long-winded end around to, you know, as you look at the incentives from, you know, government from like a, an agency or a ministry, you think about it up at like parliament or you know the prime minister or anything and then you think about it from a startup and you know a venture capitalist those are all like kind of at odds with each other and many of those sort of subsets we just talked about so you know where do you see opportunity to you know bring some of those groups together or maybe change the conversation for like I want empathy at that like philosophical level of understanding like what we're trying to do and like that what that point of departure for everybody is. Because I think sometimes that's where all of the intent in the world and all of the passion and commitment exists sort of at that like operational, the tactical level. But up at that strategic level, there's misalignment. And then that permeates down through each of those sort of respective verticals. Does that make sense? Am I thinking about that right? Yeah, no, I say it's a really good point. And I think you touched on it actually just um, before about the need to enhance resilience actually in its wider sense and, and through the widest aperture and application of that term, right? So, you know, from a from a government perspective, you know, our, our customers, our partners, they tell us that they want a secure and growing economy. And that's probably one of the most important elements to creating a resilient uh, nation right and you know because that has the economic uh, benefits it has the ca capacity and capability benefits it has the skills um, benefits that that you know growth and prosperity brings as well as the kind of the social cohesion which is an important part of you know society and societal contentness from a business perspective you know everyone wants to operate in a stable business environment and actually security um, and prosperity intertwined creates that environment and the opportunity to grow, right? And th this is kind of what we're saying, that these two things are almost two sides of the, the same coin. But, you know, when you come down a level to 
okay, so who are these actors in this ecosystem beyond kind of, you know, broad department in government and then broad major industry organizations, we start thinking about developing new technologies, right? Investors, I think is a, is a really interesting subset of the ecosystem. Because as I mean, as you you guys will know really really well, you know, the investment ecosystem has been on a bit of a journey around defence and security, yep. and increasingly we can see that there is you know there is a bit of a paradigm shift happening actually, where the pennies dropped a little bit around. Hold on a sec, this is such an important vertical in the wider technology uh, landscape that we need to support it. We need to you know and and, and actually not just support it. Um, you know, it creates new markets and there are returns to be made as well, which is good, right? It's a win-win opportunity. And that also needs to translate to entrepreneurs, you know, to the, you know, the startup founder in East London who's developing a new, um, you know, a new AI solution. Are they thinking about defense first instead of, you know, just kind of accidentally landing in this space? That's kind of, we want to change that because we want people with the brightest ideas and the most ambition to be thinking about supporting defense and security because actually you know from their perspective that's potentially where the most ambitious customers actually lie the people who are willing to take risks and the people who could be you know actually a customer first resort and can massively de-risk that kind of that technology life cycle for them so this is where we're trying to bring these these actors together with but but through understanding their individual incentives and motivations and creating programs of work that enable them to come together practically what that looks like well you know from a government perspective they need to share what they care about and what they need in a different way right they need to talk more openly to the outside world recognizing that there are security challenges out there and they can't obviously overshare right but they can say more than they particularly in the uk sometimes say today and they can say more than nothing yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And, and more than nothing is something, right? And that gives some, you know, it's it's got a massively powerful signaling intent to the wider ecosystem that, you know, these are the things that, you know, from a, you know, from a startup perspective or an investor perspective or an industry perspective, these are the things that hold on set. There's a, there's a signal there. We can coalesce around those and start to invest our own resources and our own capital and our own effort in trying to solve those challenges because potentially there is a market there right and then from a startup and an, and a wider industry and enterprise perspective i think there needs to be a deeper understanding of their incentives within government as well as in you know beyond just thinking about um you know private sector organizations as suppliers they need to see them as long-term potential partners and then there's the infrastructure element which i know you guys know you know better than anyone else you know all of the acquisition processes and life cycles and contracts and all of those things which actually steadily over time is changing and, and certainly in the uk there's a lot of inspiration through models that are you know well embedded in the us and we're starting to make some progress and it's really good to see you know some of these kind of um game changing um uh infrastructure in the uk start to be sat, stood up to help you know new entrants to this space actually collaborate so it's exciting it's really exciting and that's yeah. that's what we need right we need more of it i personally think but it's Great. good to see us um, starting to make progress great when you um you know and we've i think i've participated in a couple of things you guys have done when you come to the us and you're you know one sort of bringing constituencies from the uk to better understand and sort of see some of the ecosystems and two sort of bringing folks from the U.S. to see some of the constituencies and the ecosystems respectively, you know, as you've got a bunch of, you know, startup sort of entrepreneur folks listening, um, you know, as they're thinking about the U.K. and broader international, uh, what should they be thinking about? How do they find out more on kind of what you guys are up to? Like, how do they know if they're a fit for, for U.K. stuff or some of the stuff that Plex all working? What's that sort of message? Yeah, well, short answer. Come and talk to us. Long answer. Is, uh, is, <laughs> I'm just going to put that one on a tee for you. <laughs> yeah, no, thank you. Yeah, I'm not that right out. Thank you. But um, the longer answer is, I mean, what should they be thinking about? Well, first of all, from first of all, from a UK startup perspective, I think they need to be realistic that if they want to be relevant in the defence and security space, you can't constrain yourself to just the UK. 
Um, so, you know, you need to think bigger than that because we just, we're not a big enough market. We're, a, I think, a relative market and a relevant market internationally, but we're not a big enough market, unlike the US, that where you can you can be domestically focused in in your, in, you know, in entirety of your business strategy and scale a business. I don't think that's possible. So they need to think global and they think need to think about partners and allies and they need to think about the US. But they also increasingly need to think about things such as AUKUS and also NATO, um, but for slightly different reasons. And maybe not all of those alliances. And obviously, there are others as well, Five Eyes. You know, maybe not all of those are actually relevant to what they're doing, but they do need to consider it. And then considering it early means that they can create a roadmap around how to access those markets and how to build for those markets. Um, obviously, in order to enable that strategy, you need to build partnerships. And that's where they need to, you know, they need to develop the contextual understanding in each of those markets. So in our in our space, you know, that's something obviously that we try to help people do, you know, predominantly in the UK, but also internationally, is to provide that single access point and front door to the defense and security ecosystem, end user community, to government, to industry, you know, to investors, just to make it easy for entrepreneurs. Because this is a space that you can waste a lot of time and money, right? You and can so get try lost to trying to that. do the research. Yeah. I mean, you try exactly. to go do that on your own and you don't have somebody who's at least just compiling it together. It, it you know, it's an exactly. unbelievable asset. But if you don't have it, it's months, it's, months of wasted time there. It's amazing Actually. how like, I mean, the same problems emerge in this space, right? Who do you go and speak to? How do you raise money? What, how do you raise trusted capital? Imagine if we could just pull that knowledge and create like an institutional collective set of experiences. That's effectively what, you know, we're trying to do at the ecosystem level. But also there are other partners out there who also have that knowledge. And I think from a last thing I'll say from a founder perspective, we've seen this a lot locally here, um, particularly London, but also across the UK and Europe, is that founders in this space are increasingly coming together to share their experiences with each other. Because, you know, that's the best way, like, the, you know, that first hand perspective of having navigated some of these issues of, you know, scaling a company with a defense and security focus and, and some of the intricacies and um, idiosyncrasies that brings like that, that that's amazing insight, right? To learn from someone else's mistakes. Oh, yeah. When it's a you, you're able to get like an, an actual network effect there, right? Where all of a sudden it's just it's not only is it a creative in value and that like point to point it becomes a creative at like a compound rate for the community because then everybody just starts learning off each other. And it, instead of starting at, you know, square zero, you're starting at square five and that's worth its weight in gold easily. 100%. Yeah. I ah, dude, that's awesome. Well, look, last question is always the, uh, always the structured one. So, you know, as you think about the small topic we've talked about is sort of like, global collaboration and national security and startups and academia and the public sector and all of this. If you could change a thing, one thing, so you're king for a day, you know, you've got the, you've got the sort of magic wand, you can change one thing and you won't have to caveat it. it it'll work. Your vision will be met. What's that one thing you change and why? Yeah, I'd, I would want entrepreneurs, so agnostic of sector for a sec, to innocently think about this space as a huge area of opportunity and build for it from day one. Um, I know there's a lot of talk about dual use and the potential, but I think there is a under-realized opportunity on focus um, and to enable people to focus on defense and security as a, as a market of first resort and a market of kind of core focus for their business. Clearly that needs to be de-risked. And we've talked about some of the things such as the infrastructure that needs to change and, uh, you know, the, the kind of philosophies and, and engagement mechanisms, but at the very core of it, I think if we can collectively move the needle on all of those things, I would want, I want it to be a world where, you know, you can be genuinely from anywhere any kind of background you think you know what i just really care about keeping people safe and i want to do something about that and i'm going to build a company and that's it and you would keep it yeah, simple that's good for the world yeah 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 that rocks 
Saj, as always, brother, uh, I enjoy tremendously every time we get the chat. I uh, I am excited to see you in person in a few weeks. And uh, until then, thank you for joining us. And everybody, thank you for tuning in. Cheers. So good to see you, Tyler. Thanks so much.